Well, here we go. David here from maactioncinema.com, and we got here today the star of Warrior, Jason Tobin, today. Welcome, man. What's up, man? How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? It's been a long time, and we haven't spoken in a while. <laughs> I know. It's been a minute, man. Like, uh, oh, my God. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, I mean, I don't need to bring it up again, but, like, you know, pandemic and cancellations and right. scheduling and, uh, but, you know, what's really crazy is, um, I mean, it's a cliche, but time, time flies. We, you know what I mean? Like, here we are, you know, right, right, right on the eve of, of season three and uh what a hell of a season we've um we've got you know it's i think we feel really good about it uh, i think hbo feels really good about it um i think people can tell from just the trailer alone that we stepped up our game you know what i mean like uh i think we came back with a vengeance you know what i mean like after after what happened we're like okay we better come back and like we got canceled once so we're gonna leave it you know, we're going to make sure we leave everything on the field, you know, leave no uh, stone unturned or whatever that expression is. <laughs> man, I am so, so stoked, man. Seeing that trailer, it just got me even more excited, you know. Um, but yeah. speaking of how, you know, it was canceled before. So what was your initial reaction when 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 you got the call and you were like, season three is the go? <laughs> wow. OK, well, let me just backtrack and just say that when we were. It wasn't an official cancellation, but when Cinemax was like, you know, no longer going to be making um, uh, original content, I took that, I took it hard, you know, even though I've been in this business for so long, even though uh, I've seen all the ups and downs and, and uh, you know, had lots of disappointments, um, that one really upset me because uh, I felt like we did everything right. And, and plus we had the legacy of Bruce Lee and it's like, you know, I, we do everything right. We all work our hardest, give a, give everything that we got, and then we still, you know, got canceled. So I took it really, really hard to the point where it was difficult for me to even look at photos from from previous seasons or even talk about it. Just like it, it hurt. It, I took it personally. Um, but fortunately, a lot of people on our team, you know, uh, still held out. Um, hope and didn't give up the fight and um uh but then obviously the pandemic hit and you know i had to you know move on you know i ha i had to let it go because i still needed to put food on the table and um you know i still got family and i got kids and so i started to look for other projects and um i ended up working on fistful of vengeance the uh the movie that was the sequel to uh Wu assassins and i was in bangkok and um and uh, on the very last day of shooting, Fistful of Vengeance, the night before I was going to get on a flight and go back home to, to Hong Kong, I, uh, I'm sitting in the green room and my phone rings and Jonathan Chopper's name pops up. And instantly, I knew what that meant. I just instinctually was like, oh, this is something, this is important. And, and Jonathan and I had, have, had always had a, a great relationship and uh but we don't like call each other just to chit chat and chin wag you know like we call each other when there's something you know we're right i won't say all business but we don't we don't waffle you know what i mean so when as soon as i saw his name on the phone i was like <gasps> uh i <laughs> fucking grabbed it I, I walked out went to quiet spot and and then jt was basically calling all of us and trying to get the feeler which was look uh, I talked to HBO and uh, they didn't even realize that we could do more Warrior when I brought it up. And I'm like, oh, and he says, well, you know what? If you could do more Warrior, great, but we need to get the team back. You know, we're going to make sure everyone's going to come back, right? So he's calling all of us to make sure we're going to come back. So he's like, so you want to come back? And I'm like, hell yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to call me for that. You just, you can just assume that I'm back, okay? So, uh, of course, all of us, uh, you know, said that we were coming, you know, we'd love to come back. And um, and then it was a long road from there, man. That was, It was still 18 months from that moment till we started shooting, right? I think that was in, uh, yeah, something like 18 months from, from that call to, to when we actually started uh, shooting. So, um, 
And then it's been a year since we've shot it. Oh, wait, no, more than a year. You know, man, I, I'm so confused with time <laughs> right now, but, but you get my point. It's right, just right. been like, you know, um, but yeah, I was ecstatic, you know, like I, I, um, you know, I, I've been very fortunate in my career uh, that I, I've always felt like the right role has come to me at the right time in, in my life. And, um, and th this role and this show has given me so many gifts and, um, and, uh, man, I just, it's just, you know, if I, if I'm ever going to be remembered, um, I feel like this is one of those roles that will, uh, people will, will remember me for. So, so bring it on. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. Young June is just a, such a dope character. So, um, so oh my how, God, how fun was it to return to, 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 to this role? Oh, you know, extremely fun. I mean, I, you know, uh, as you'd imagine, it's it's a great role. I, I, it's a real joy for me to play, and and I think this is some maybe some people who maybe don't, are not actors, they may have a misunderstanding about what is fun, right? Like it's incredibly hard work. You know, there's obviously times where I'm not, Young Jun's not having fun. He may be angry, he may be upset, he might be vulnerable, he might. But that is fun as an actor. That's fun. Mm -hmm. You know, the fun is like creating something and uh, of, you know, of that caliber. And uh, and then, of course, it is fun between takes, you know, between all the difficult, hard stuff. You know, we're, we've got a, a great um, uh, 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 sense of uh, fun and play on set. And, and I certainly always like to bring that, you know, especially if I'm doing heavy scenes and stuff. I like to be able to like cut and then let go and keep it nice and loose and fun and um and fortunately you know I, i've been there for three seasons now and so i feel very comfortable with the crew and i feel comfortable you know uh expressing myself in the role I, I, as i as i have always mm -hmm. but i've grown more into it you know what i mean and um let me just tell you there are a lot of great roles out there but I'm, obviously i'm biased but which <laughs> is <laughs> ah man what a great role such a great role and it, you know and it's like i'm just lucky enough to play him because it's all on the page the writers created it jonathan tropper created it whoever got this part would have would have um had of a would have had a, a ball of a time and i i i know that and so i'm like shit i better i better enjoy every goddamn drop of this experience you know right 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 well you know let's let's talk about the action of season three so yeah. Yeah, With the stunt coordinator uh, Brett Chan is him and his team is back, right? For this one. Yep, yep, yep. Brett Chan and the whole gang all back. Yeah, um, back again, back with a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did they, uh, you know, one up you know, the action in this season compared to the previous ones? Wow. Um, you know, uh, first of all, their whole team is amazing, and um, I think like everyone is really more comfortable in their roles just because we've done it now for three seasons uh we all came back with a healthy chip on our shoulders to like really do our our very very best for this for this season uh and and brett just you know you can tell that brett brett does great in all the shows that he makes and i don't want to diss any other show that he works on but you can tell that he loves this show you know, he really loves it, like we all do. Right. And he loves all the performers. Um, and I think also one of the special ingredients uh, that we that we had this season was um, the writing team, the the cast, the the acting team, so to speak, and then the stunt team really gelled and collaborated this season. And there was a very healthy amount of you know, push back, not, not push back, like, oh, I don't like your idea, but like, well, okay, you know, like, everyone came in with stuff and made it better. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and I think there are some of the fight scenes in this season where, like, I'm really happy that we've worked together as a team. It wasn't just, okay, this is it, we're doing it, you know, like, like, okay, you know, why are we doing this? You know, like, every move, every beat, in a fight scene is not there 
willy nilly for no reason. It's there for a reason, as right. is every line that's in a script is there for a reason. It's not action for action's sake. It's there. These beats mean something. We're mm -hmm. doing it this way because we're trying to express an idea. This is the, it, it, there's a, uh, without sounding highfalutin, but there's a poetry to it, you know? Um, significance. And um, I mean, and that's, that makes those fight scenes even more worthwhile when you watch them. You know, when there's more at stake, then those fight scenes become that much better. Right, right. I mean, uh, it's definitely, definitely better when the action, you know, lends itself to the, to the, to the story itself, not just action for action's sake. So, totally, one hundred percent. I think that's one of the strengths of our show. Mm -hmm. So, um, how did how much more did you train, you know, for for this season compared yeah. to the previous ones? Uh, was there any specific type of martial arts you trained on, or anything different like that? Um. I pretty much stick to my the same kind of training that I've been doing for the last few years, which is basically, you know, when I'm off off season, you know, like I would, you know, a mix for me personally, and it's not just for the the moves, right? It's it's for my own fitness and my own. It's a way for me to get into character. And I love to box or or do Muay Thai, mm -hmm. I, and 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 do jujitsu. Jujitsu, we don't really use jujitsu in the show, but. When I train jujitsu, when I and I when I spar, you know, and and box and and do muay thai, it gives me a sense of feeling of feeling like a warrior. You know what I mean? And of course, it helps your cardio, your fitness, you know, your uh, coordination, and you know, the way Young Jun fights is is you know like you know you know changing angles, you know, stab stab is it's like punching. It's like you know, so um, so you know uh. That Muay Thai boxing stuff is is really great for me, and it, it makes me feel like I'm not just working myself out for the physicality of it, but but feel like a fucking badass, whether I am or not in real life or not. You know what I mean? I I just mean like it's like part of the acting. It's not just training the the, the, the for the fights. It's training me as as Young Jin too to give me that that, that feeling. Right. Um, and then of course once I get to Cape Town. And then, then I do more specific training that's related to the fight scenes and the moves, you know. Unfortunately, I feel really bad about this. Um, uh, Brett had had designed a, a fight for me, and and he had like a, he had me like do like this almost like this cartwheel over uh, an an enemy where I kind of like I stab them and then I cartwheel over them, mm -hmm. and uh, and I. Even though I've been an athletic person my whole life, I'm, I'm not the best at cartwheels. I, I never really done a lot of, never really done a lot of gymnastics. My daughter can like do cartwheels like nonstop perfectly, but um, so I was like, all right, you know, I'll learn how to do cartwheels. So I got pretty good at cartwheels, you know, like the beginning of the season I started doing cartwheels, doing cartwheels, and I was like, all right, yeah, I got this. Practice, practice, practice. But then on the, on the day of the shoot, I just couldn't pull it off because the suit was tight, I had padding on. I was wearing those boots. The area that we had was like a lot smaller, uh, and then and like uh, and the, the road was cobbled, you know, the cobbled road. So yeah. like it just everything conspired to for, to the point where like my cartwheel over my enemy looked really bad. It looked <laughs> terrible. It looked terrible. Oh god! I, and I was like, oh guys, I'm sorry. And then finally, like you know, fortunately, you know, uh, Brett's like, you know what? <laughs> Just thump on his head. I'm like, great. So now it's me going, Ugh. and uh, you know, fortunately it works. You know, and uh, it, it's all good. So, um, but yeah, the rest of the season definitely more like specific to the to the actual fights that you know that we're doing. Um, that's you know the fighting becomes uh, sorry the training becomes more specific to that. Um, I personally would love you know if we if we get a a season four um, you know my my wish would be to do something like um what uh andrew does andrew prior to each season has gone to korea to you know uh uh train and specifically on his kicks and, and i would love to be able to do for season four you know go spend two months somewhere and and just and just straight up you know practice kali you know screaming like knife fighting and stuff um Unfortunately, where I was in Hong Kong, I didn't really have access to that. And I do have a bit of a background from that because I used to train at the Inno Santo Academy, you know, way back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I still have a few skills I remember, you know, um, my Kali days. But uh, but I would love to do more of that, you know, um, just because, like, 
young June and uh and me personally I think it's it's just so cool you know what I mean right right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so we know it must be great to return and you know to work with all all the familiar faces that you had you know in the first yeah. two seasons. Uh, but there is a few new additions to season three, including uh, Chelsea yeah. Muirhead and um, martial arts legend Mark DeCascos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you speak about working with 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 those two? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, um, Chelsea was a, an amazing addition to our cast. Um, as soon as uh, I found out she was on board, I reached out to her and you know wanted to welcome her and and uh, welcome to the family and stuff. And she really stepped up and and I think this was like her first series regular role. And um, so just to see her, you know, take the reins of that responsibility and and, and have a great time. But you know, one of the things that really impressed me about her <laughs> is she was in the gym every day. Wow. She was training every day in all the different disciplines that, you know, the group training and then she was doing specific training and she was learning swords and she doesn't even really fight in the show, but she was like making sure that she just took this experience, you know, completely and just, you know, she sunk her teeth into it. And she's wow. at, you know, she has this access to this whole amazing stunt team. So she was in the gym, the train, doing this, doing that. She's a, she's a, she's a martial artist, you know. She's wow. uh, and she's very like uh, um, athletic. Um, she's a baller. Like she definitely, she's got game, you know. Um, so yeah, hats off to her. I I hopefully we'll see more of her like, um, kicking ass. <laughs> hope so. Hope so. Yeah. 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 And then what about Mark? Then, oh, oh, Mark. Okay, so, um, well, first of all, Mark is an absolute gentleman. Like, I mean that in the truest sense. The guy is just a classy gentleman, you know? And uh, uh, it, it, what's, what's crazy is, you know, I'm aging myself here, but, you know, when I first moved to L.A., uh, I, uh, to become an actor, I uh, signed, signed up to, to be an extra, right? And I worked, you know, I was an extra on a bunch of movies and TV shows. And one of the films that I was an extra on was a movie called Drive. Oh, Sorry, really? The cast off. yeah. So if you watch the beginning of Drive, like literally the opening sequence, the first minute of the film, like, you know, like it, you see the camera, like looking at a port, you know, and like, uh -huh. And then he sees a ship, and then the, literally the first human being you see, who's like, you know, uh, on top of some crate or something, is me. Oh, what? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> and uh, so I was a young kid then, and and I went, I went, uh, and I talked to him, to Mark. And dude, he was at the height of his career there. He's, you know, he was a, he was already like, you know, that's Mark the Cascos. And I have to say, I was an essentially, I was an extra. Mm -hmm. He gave me so much time and attention and care and gave me some really solid, good advice uh, and and gave me some like training martial arts tips, you know, and, uh, you know, to how to improve my kicks and stuff like that. And and so then like decades later to to be working on Warrior and to then welcome him onto the set of uh, of, of our shows was a real pleasure because this guy. um he taught me something you know that's how i like to operate too i i'm very um open and um i try to be as as helpful and kind to the people on the set because i know what it can be like there is definitely a hierarchy on set and sometimes um you know for better or for worse you know um you know that's that's just the reality of it and i know that you know it can be I, i've been treated horribly on sets before you know uh when i was an extra so to, to meet a, a star of his caliber uh, and, and to to feel his generosity and then uh, to see him, you know, years later, we're working on this Bruce Lee show. Um, let's just say I took a lot of pictures of me and him. I'm like, <laughs> like hey, Mark, can, can I get a photo with you? You know, like, we got some really nice photos. And um, yeah, he's a real gentleman. And, you know, it's interesting because, like, he's... Uh, you know, listening to him talk about some of the stories that he has, you know, you know, his Hollywood stories and, um, 
But then, like, here's this martial arts legend, and, you know, next thing, you turn around, and he's sitting there, and he's reading, like, classics and Shakespeare and stuff. You know, he's, like, he's a, he's a, uh, he's a real renaissance man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can definitely, I can definitely confirm that, because I, I interviewed him last month for one of his projects, and he's just the yeah. nicest, the nicest yeah. gentleman I've, I've ever met. Man. <laughs> seriously, seriously, <laughs> seriously. Seriously, that they is yeah. And so for me, like, you know, there's this real full circle thing. And uh um uh, one of those things where it's like it's, it's um m- makes you think like, man, life is incredible, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah, drive, drive, drive is excellent. So it's actually one of my favorite <laughs> Mark It's, it's oh. cool, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's cool because like Steve Wang, who uh uh directed it. Um, he's a fan of Warrior, and and um, and again, again on Drive, I met Steve uh, back then, and he was super nice to me. I'm like, I can't believe like the lead star, Mark, and then the the director Steve were like just these really kind human beings who would give like this, you know, background actor this extra the mm-hmm. time, you know, like uh, uh, it that generosity is, was um, was touching, and I never forgot it, and. And now, you know, um, I'm in touch with Steve and, you know, and he's, you know, um, just said so many wonderful, nice things about um, Warrior and, and, you know, and obviously about my work and stuff. And so, yeah, it just, um, you know, I can't even tell you how much that, that kind of thing means to me. It, it means a lot, you know. That's awesome, man. So such a cool, yeah, yeah. full circle. <laughs> <laughs> full circle. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, Jason, um, let's get into a couple of uh, fan questions that I got for you. Here. Oh, OK. And, yes, here we go. So there's a fan that asked, um, do you think uh, Bruce Lee would have been a law enforcer had, had he been alive for the series? Uh, you mean like like uh, the character in, 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 in Warrior? <laughs> would he be one of the law enforcers? You mean a law enforcer? You mean like one of like one of the cops or? I think that's what the fan meant. <laughs> Well, you know what? If if yeah, well let's let's put it this way: if Bruce Lee were still alive and he we made Warrior today, he'd be he'd be like in his seventies or eighty eighty. He'd be eighty now, right? Yeah, he <laughs> something. Yeah, he'd be eighty. So, wow. So if we go with that, then I wonder: look, would he would he have would he play a Tong boss? Would he be? Uh, uh-huh. Because obviously, if we if they had made Warrior back then when he was still alive, you know, instead of what happened, right, right, it would have been Assam, right? So, right, right. But if, he, but if he were eighty now, who would he play? Hmm. Oh man, maybe he'd come back in season four as like head of the hopway from New York City or something, you know? Right. Like because there was a hop there was a hopway in New York, right? There was like Tongs in New York. Um, right. Law enforcement. No, I. You know what? It'd be pretty hilarious if he he played like, you know, a cop. That would be cool. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, let's see. Next one is said. Uh, fan ask. Um, how has you changed the most as an actor from season one to season three? Wow, a good question. How have I changed as an actor from season one? To season three? Um. Well, okay, I would say, I would say, I'll answer it differently. What has stayed the same is my approach to the role where, uh, specifically with Young Jun, is to honestly express myself and to really enjoy, enjoy every moment of it, whether I'm laughing or crying. It's just, um, I've always gone in with that philosophy. But what's changed is that when I, first got to the set of season one I've been doing a lot of like uh independent movies and there's a different pace to the filming and a different pace to the acting and it took me a minute to kind of like um find my find the right pace Mm -hmm. for television or specifically for this genre of television and then as an actor, I've tried to improve my technique uh, for television. You, the one thing with television is you have to be um, 
extremely prepared. You know, sometimes on an independent film, you can kind of get on the film and you can kind of explore within within the takes and find things. Whereas sometimes on TV, we're just so pressed for time. You have to be ready to get your good takes in right off the bat. And then if you get a couple of good takes in, then maybe you might have time for one take where you can um, uh, have a little bit more fun outside of the script, you know? So I don't, I don't necessarily mean improv, but maybe try something, you know? Mm -hmm. um, what you don't want to do is, well, I never improvise until I make sure that I've really um, understood and clearly expressed what the writers are trying to say. And then once I've done that, then I may have a bit of a play. And I always get a kick out of it when I watch the show and I go, ah, oh, you know, they use the take that I threw this little piece in, you know? Um, right, right. Uh, and uh, and obviously what's different between season one and three is that, you know, um, you know, I've just been in the role a bit longer. So I feel more comfortable in the role. Um, and also what's changed is between seasons two and three, we had this big gap, the cancellation, we had a pandemic, but you know, it worked for the it worked for the character, it worked for the show because at the end of season two, we had this massive riot in Chinatown. Right. And 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 then in real life we had a pandemic. So it's almost like that grief, that the the, the those tough years, the it kind of like informed us. It, it that's what it must have, that's what it must have felt like to those people in Chinatown after that riot, like mm -hmm. this overwhelming event that was just, you know, devastating. Um, so we brought the feelings that we had as real human beings living through these, this pandemic, through the cancellation and getting picked up again and brought it with us. And, uh, and it really worked. It's now it's, it's, as as the events of Chinatown during the riot would have aged these people, we've aged too through this pandemic. So like it's it there's been like a similar parallel, and also like you know there's other parallels, right? Which is you know Chinese people were scapegoated and you know back then is like um, you know having diseases, and then here we go, we lived through a pandemic in 2020, and and we got Asian people being accused of carrying diseases again. You know, so like in many ways you know we can use that in our work as artists and so um and for me you know i'm sometimes i can't really express myself about you know what's going on in the world but i've always used art and acting as a way to express myself so um it was great to have a channel to then put that into season three it's a long way of saying that you know um the long-winded way of to answer this question but you know i think those are some of the things that changed for me as an actor Awesome, man. Well, yeah. Jason, um, you know, uh, thank you so much for your time today. I mean, it's so great to speak to you again, and we can't wait to see you in action again. Warrior Season 3, premiering on Max, June 29th. June 29th, my God. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Let's talk again. For sure, Jason. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care, Thanks, man. Thanks, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, bro.